All right, today I'm excited. I have Matthew on. He's a USRSA, MRT, and ERSA level two pro tour stringer. He just presented at the ERSA symposium in Dusseldorf, and he um, talked about rackets, uh, machine customization. So I really want to hear about that. So with that, Matthew, um, let's just get right into it. Yeah. So um, let's see. Where should we start with the? Um, yeah, I know we could sit here for. I know we could yeah. sit here for hours, but I guess. You know, let's start first of all about the ERSA symposium. Mm -hmm. You know, that's been around for a while. You've been involved mm -hmm. with it for a while. So tell me mm -hmm. a little bit about um, what brought you to the to the symposium this year and about what you presented on. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I've been to the symposium since the, the very first year in 2013 um, when, you know, of course, they had in-person symposiums. Um, you know, this year, of course, was in person along with um, online for those who couldn't attend personally. Mm -hmm. um, this year, the reason in particular I attended was the chance to present um, what I've done with stringing machines. Um, in this case, customizing or modifying, however you'd like to characterize it. Mm -hmm. um, my own stringing machine is an electronic linear constant pull machine, which I decided I'd like to, to modify, uh, to make some small improvements. Um, to optimize the the end result and so some of the modifications i've made involve for example instead of pulling tension at a downward angle for 360 degree rotation as the overwhelming majority of machines do um, i actually uh, raised the tension head um, to pull tension in a straight line in line with the grommets and um, I actually, it took two steps, raising the Diablo uh, kind of assembly along with raising the entire tension head. So I raised the Diablo as much as I could just through two screws, um, mm -hmm. first of all, so I could lift the whole tension head less um, to keep the center of gravity lower. Um, but yeah, um, the Diablo being raised made some difference and the whole thing coming up made some difference. Okay, so again, what what machine? Um, it's you, uh, are it's you Toyozuki. Using? It's which one? Toyozuki. Um, okay. The ES5 ProTech. It's the the factory that made the old Gozen machines for a long time, and then um, more recently the Yonex machines. Oh, okay, okay. And so, um, you know, after I raised the Diablo, I I raised I I strung a racket, checked. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. didn't check with the Diablo in its original factory position. Otherwise, the percent number would have been higher. But um, with the tension head raised versus in its original position, there was a 6% difference in string bed stiffness. And mm -hmm. with the Diablo lower, as it would have been from the factory, it would have been a higher number than 6. Um, so that was one thing I did. Another thing I did was the, the support arms were shorter on my machine versus the most recent machine. And so I actually measured the support arms, side profile through a technical drawing and machined extensions to the support arms. Mm -hmm. And same thing, I did it before and after. Um, and that, that as well, less deformation, higher string bed stiffness. Um, then otherwise, I, I love the Babala clamps. So mm -hmm. I took, a pair of Babala Star 5, same as the sensor clamps. And they're too wide, the the diameter of the shaft to fit on the clamp bases of my machine. Mm -hmm. So I just machined those down, turned them down, so they actually fit on my machine now. Um, other than that... Um, so you're really finding, so you're finding the best of what you like, and yes. you're making it work together, even if you have to like do some machining and so forth to, to get the best. Because I've always liked the Babala clamps myself you know um, yeah they're in fantastic. The past as well so how was that received at the at the symposium and were there some other recommendations or was there other people that did this um you know did some customizing or was there some real you know aha moments from that um it, it was well received um there were no feedback as in question uh, sorry comments it, just questions because nobody had, had attempted anything like this um so from raising the tension head to fabricating machine arm extensions, to even actually the, the billiard uh, pads. Those are wear items, they're plastic. 
mm-hmm. and they will, I mean, uh, they, they deform. So even those I machined some exactly the same from steel, which I then had ceramic coated. And so, and then I just put a piece of um, electrical tape over each one. So same thing, it gives you a better feel for when to stop cranking the six and 12 supports, um, things like this. Uh, but yeah, you know, with the, with the general public in attendance, with a couple of machine manufacturers in attendance, um, there were questions and I think people were just kind of intrigued. And so uh, I began earlier this year posting these things on, on Instagram. I hadn't, hadn't done that before. And so suddenly I had all these Instagram requests. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> from what they saw, because nice. they just wanted to kind of follow what I do. Right. Some of the machines, when you're looking at how they're pulling from, from the racket mounted to where the Diablo is, you know, um, and I know some of the machines lift it up and then pull it back and they just have different ways of doing it. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you, you kind of wonder like, you know, is there a better, you know, anytime you create an angle, as I remember back when, you know, it, I think it was the 2008 US Open when I was stringing there. And that's the introduction of the Wilson Bayardo machine. And we had the engineers there. Um, and so they were, were, you know, so we're constantly like, oh, so how's the clamps working? You know, like as we're working and stringing, you got the engineers working or you know you you can ask them questions they can they ask they were asking us questions at stringers and and it was just kind of really fun to have that kind of time really with the engineers and you could really get a lot like what if we did this and how would this work and you know so it was kind of like that you know and i think if if you had a little bit more of that you know um and so many little things that you can change Mm -hmm. and just tweak and stuff and it's kind of fun i guess you know if you're kind of a a tennis string geek you know like us you know right it's like you're always asking questions about Mm -hmm. how could you make it a little you know a little bit better it's not like we need it you know who cares right but Mm -hmm. in reality we just like to have be more precise and so forth and i never really thought about how that's really going to affect the string bed um stiffness yeah. and mm-hmm. you know all those kind of things because it, it you know we start to question things like you've kind of taken taken that on in some some regard and it's great that you were able to present it at a symposium yeah. and and there's not a lot of string symposiums around i mean the no. the only one i know uh, besides you know the ersa like this is you know back um tim Strawn and yeah. his organization uh, so, you know. yeah um, mm-hmm. And he's had a symposium. I mean, I, I, but 2016 was his last one. Oh yeah, 20, yeah. Um, and you know, those were great because it was. Um, I mean, it was U.S. based, of course, mm-hmm. and and um, you would get a lot of. Uh, you know, you'd get people from uh, Wilson and Yonix and a few other people that would you know present head and stuff, and it was just a great way to um, kind of collaborate, and um, it was kind of technical in some aspects, mm-hmm. and I think that's where many times if you wanted to get into being an MRT, you could test there as well and so forth. Right. So, you know, we I did that. So really the the ERSA, that's the only symposium. And so last year it was fun. You know, I was able to attend virtually, but I know you presented this year and you actually went, you live in the US now, right? And, but you went to uh, Dusseldorf and, um, you know, had that experience. But um, essentially I had a, a slideshow, just PDF. Mm-hmm. And I had pictures of sort of before and after. Mm-hmm. So before, along with what could be improved and why, mm-hmm. along with then sort of the, the thought process, along with a technical drawing on the next slide, and then the end result mm-hmm. on, a, on a slide after that. So it went from, you know, my tension head change and, and kind of what you were talking about, Patrick, about people ask why things are as they are or what. I heard enough of these things over the years that finally I told myself, why are things the way they are and why is no one doing anything about them? So people would talk about, oh, well, if you put, if you pull tension at a downward angle, you lose this percentage of, of tension. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to raise it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, um, actually got around to doing it and very happy with the results. And, you know, as you mentioned, other manufacturers have gone other ways about doing it. So in terms of what's out there right now, the head machine does rise to pull tension in line with the grommets. But as you said, it has to move. It kind of pivots and then pulls back and then moves and pivots back down. Uh, The Babala sensor expert had the same mechanism in terms of rising up and then pulling back along with some of the older electromagnetic clamp um, Babala machines, which they actually had a Diabolo. Mm -hmm. And then you wrapped it around, they rose and then they pulled back. But the reason I don't mm-hmm. like that approach, whether the approach of those machines 
you know, with the, you know, the current or the, the previous ones is it's one more moving part, one more thing that can go wrong. And yeah. I have seen machines of that configuration have that part fail. Um, I'm not saying it's that's going to happen very often or very soon, but it's just one more thing that can go wrong. Whereas once I lost 360 degree rotation, I've never missed it. Uh, the, if you look at badminton rackets, having 360 degree rotation does not matter at all because there's no to ro- you know to have to pull over yeah. or under. Um, and so basically what you're saying in case somebody doesn't understand is like with with machines because the way that the Diablo is set and the way that the the racket is set on the racket you can spin the racket all the way around when you need to go to the other side to string and so you're saying with with the way that you you're you're customizing it you no longer can take that racket you have to go around the other way that's right and you know so for for badminton rackets it makes no difference for Mm -hmm. most squash rackets it makes no difference and for tennis rackets, it affects three to four central mains that you pull the main over or under the shaft. I, I pull over, but, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's not exactly a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it creates one little situation. I mean, you fix one thing, but then there's it creates some other, yeah, there's no perfect, you know, scenario no. to, to eliminate that or whatever. But that's kind of interesting. I, I hadn't really, you know, that's why I was like, when I heard about, because I, I read the the lineup of the symposium this year and I saw your name on there um, and it said racket machine customization. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of curious what, what that was about. And it was great yeah. when you contacted me. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, yeah, I got to have you on. I, I want to hear about this. 